Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. We'll look at the latest data and the trends, but first, up to the Continental Divide, top of Loveland Ski Area, still a little shrouded from our storm system, but it is, it's very cold. It's about zero at 12,000 feet right now. We're headed to 10 to 15 degrees below zero tonight, so uh, pretty cold. And then the wind will ramp up on the top of the Continental Divide overnight throughout the day on Sunday. So a pretty brutal combination will greet you if you're planning to go up, especially above tree line tomorrow. I hear today was an excellent powder day out at uh, Aspen, Snowmass, the Highlands. Uh, I'm glad it turned out that way. Uh, now we're, we're, we're only looking at lighter snows for Colorado down the road. But let me take you into um, my latest trends here and what I'm seeing. Um, the reason for the lighter snows in Colorado, the, the, the pattern's just shifting north a little bit. We're going to have a pretty fast jet flow, which will favor the Pacific Northwest, BC, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming more than anywhere else. Unfortunately, that completely leaves Utah and California out of the active flow for probably the next five to seven days. Um, I wish I had better news on that. I'll look at the wind for Colorado on the divide coming up. I've got a forecast map, and we'll also check in on the East Coast storm system, the windy storm for 1210 and 1211. Um, first off, here is that wind gust forecast for Colorado Sunday, 7 a.m. These are forecast gusts. So you can see how the continental divide is all lit up with uh, purples, reds, and the tan color is even faster. That's, the, that's your highest wind gust. So, you know, that's blanketing most of the front range high peaks. Um, Nederland, the Indian Peaks, Eldora, um, up to Cameron Pass, Longs Peak, Mount Meeker, Berthoud Pass. So uh, Longs Peak in the morning will be gusting probably 60 to 70 miles an hour. Grays Peak, 40 to 50 mile an hour gust. Quandary Peak, 40 to 50 mile an hour gust. And if you want less wind, you have to go west of the Continental Divide. All right, let me take you back, and I want to show you uh, water vapor satellite imagery for the northeast. So here's our storm that's going to develop into this windy storm system. Same storm that pulled out of uh, Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming. With this type of track, it's so far to the north. Now, the, it's going to push warm air all the way up into the northeast. That's why we're going to have rain initially at all the big ski areas. And then it will change over to snow very late on the 10th and through the 11th. It will change over to snow. Um, if you wanted all snow in the northeast, the low position would have to be somewhere down here, and it would have to take a track like this. So we're way off. Um, here's the forecast radar and satellite for the west. Current state of affairs right there. By Sunday morning, next storm system, and these are just fast minor storms, but the direct, the projection and the trajectory of this will take all the precip and the snow from the Pacific Northwest BC into Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. So that's Sunday morning at 6. Here's the afternoon, spills into the Tetons, a little bit into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. There's Monday morning at 6. Notice everything's kind of curling around Utah. Um, there might be a touch of snow right there. Uh, Late like Tuesday, and then Wednesday, uh, looks like that load drops down through Colorado. Might spin up in southeast Colorado, northern um, New Mexico, um, and then another little area of snow begins to work its way into Idaho and Montana. So you can see the effect here of this flow. Everything just kind of goes around Utah, and it, it definitely goes around California. I mean, I just don't have anything for California for the next five to seven, maybe even eight days. We're going to have to wait a long time, I have a feeling. All right, let's take a look at uh, the jet pattern here. So this is uh, 1210. You can see it's just fast. Uh, again, it ushers all that moisture and those two disturbances into the northern tier. Here is a 1218. Uh, the jet's amplified up in Canada, so it's really about whatever's coming in on the southern branch. Um, and there might be a little something, but with this flow at this point, again, you're really favoring Montana. Um, Wyoming and potentially brushing Colorado and if we get a low developing northern New Mexico and, and with that pattern really it, it does favor even the northeast you might have something set up there with that type of trough that's out uh, along the east coast um, here's my forecast for snow through the 11th um, looking at good snow moderate to maybe even heavy in the Tetons with two shots Montana uh, up to six inches Idaho does good around Brundage, Schweitzer, Sun Valley, four to ten inches more in the interior, central interior, central high peaks of Idaho. About a foot up there for Baker, Stevens, Rainier. Second period is 1212 through 1215. Again, very light 
through the interior. Kind of, you can see how it curls down and brushes Colorado, and then we'll wait and see if we get a, a low through northern New Mexico and southeast Colorado. Final period is really light again, just favoring Idaho, Montana, Wyoming for light snow. Might have a little bit more up in the Pacific Northwest and BC. Let's check in on the northeast here. So here's the latest jet forecast for 11 p.m. on the 10th. You can see, again, with that position of the low, there's a ton of wind with this, but it just pushes all the big ski areas into the warm sector, and there'll be rain initially. Forecast radar at about 11.30 at night on 12.10, right on the changeover line. So, again, most of the day is rain, but right on the changeover line, uh, at about midnight there, running through J.P., Kellington, and Stowe, Western, uh, New York State will be in the snow at that point, snowing through parts of Pennsylvania as well. So that's the changeover line, that west side of the cold front, and that'll be swinging through very late uh, Sunday into Monday and changing it over. Here's my forecast, latest forecast for snow in the northeast. Again, about a foot through Sugar Bush, Bad River, Stowe, and J.P., uh, western, uh, well, parts of uh, New York State, four to maybe 10 inches of snow. And that is probably going to do it. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it, and take care.